Dr. Ariane from The Movement Paradigm. Are you someone who suffers from acne, perhaps on your face, on your back, even on your arms? Maybe you've had it since puberty, it still has not resolved. Well, we're gonna dive into the gut-skin axis today and some of the reasons why you need to look inside as opposed to simply just putting on things on the outside from a logical standpoint or even taking medications to reduce it. As it relates to the gut skin access, where we're specifically referring to the gut microbiome and how its influence can affect the skin, especially as it re relates to inflammation. We want to remember that our gut is 70% of our immune system, so this can contribute to inflammatory skin disorders if we have some type of dysbiosis in the gut. So acne vulgaris presents as follicular hyperkeratinization, increased sebum production, and propion bacterium. So now we're gonna dive into eight root causes of acne and some of the things that you may not have thought about that is definitely worth exploring in your journey to resolving this. Number one, and perhaps the most obvious, is hormonal changes. So acne will often present itself during puberty initially, but it can also present in things like PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So we want to recognize that any kind of hormonal imbalance can contribute to this. So really diving into why are you having hormonal imbalances and what they specifically are is really fundamental. Number two is increased insulin and insulin-like growth factor. This can ultimately increase the pathogenesis of acne vulgaris forming and it can affect how the follicular inflammation occurs. So it is important to recognize that things like blood sugar and of course how we are regulating our diet in terms of proteins and sugars and carbohydrates is really vital. Number three is a high glycemic diet. So this is often our Western or standard American diet, our SAD diet. So things like increased processed foods, increased sugar rich foods, all of this can contribute to an environment where acne can flourish because it increases sebum production. Number four is any alterations to the gut microbiome. So this can present as intestinal dysbiosis, so an imbalance of bacteria in the gut. This can present as SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, leaky gut, so intestinal permeability, all of these things can create inflammation systemically, which can contribute to acne. So remember, 70% of our immune system is in our gut, so the gut-associated lymphoid tissue. So that is what can drive inflammation anywhere in our body. Number five is increased levels of linoleic acid. So when we think about our ratio of omega-3s to 6s, oftentimes we have way more 6s than we have 3s. So it's not that the omega-6s aren't important, we just need to balance them out. And so we think about things like vegetable oils, primarily that's a really big one, things like peanut oil, actual vegetable oil, those the, the processed foods that we're eating that are cooked in those things, all of that can contribute to advanced glycolytic end products, which means oxidative stress and inflammation, all contributing ultimately potentially to acne. Number six, this is a really common one that is one of my number one things to explore almost immediately with anyone who's suffering from acne is whey protein. Whey is found in our dairy products and whey uh, can be a really big trigger for acne. So it doesn't mean it is for everyone, but it is absolutely worth doing a formal elimination diet of dairy at the minimum and then reintroducing to see if it is one of the drivers for you. Number seven is low stomach acid. It's estimated that approximately 40% of people that suffer from acne have low stomach acid. So this can contribute to the way that we are breaking down proteins specifically and it is very common. I see it in my practice frequently, especially if there are some gut and or inflammation issues happening. Number eight is nutrient deficiencies. So things like essential fatty acids, vitamin A, E, zinc, B6, selenium, all of these are really important and they can contribute to acne. So it's very important to recognize, do a nutrient profile, nutrient analysis, whether that is for, for testing or even simply doing it through a program to see how much of each nutrient you are getting on a daily basis. And one last thing, toxins. So we are exposed to so many toxins on a regular basis. And so 
Dioxin is one of the toxins that is considered a persistent organic pollutant, and that is something that can also contribute to acne. So we do want to factor in other environmental exposures, but the key things I wanted to come across today were really this, you know, gut skin access and how what is happening in here is what's also ultimately going to reflect our skin. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give it a like, give it a share, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Movement Paradigm for weekly tips on mindset, nutrition, and movement.